What's going on, YouTube? We are back with another video, and today we're working on this car um, on the Infinity. We keep getting the low wiper fluid uh, sign. I'm gonna try to see if it's gonna come on right now. If not, I'm gonna just show you the process to get it taken care of. Um, normally it come on a couple minutes after cranking up, so we'll see. Pretty much a little waiting game. Check it in a minute. So we just wait right now. Normally it'll pop up, but obviously right now I don't want to do so. Because what's happening was uh change and the top of the fluid off and everything so the fluid was completely full and uh, it was given that low fluid signal so I watched a couple videos um, really couldn't find much on the QX56 um, but I did see some on some different infinity models I know it's loud, so I'm going to wait. I'm going to definitely wait. Um, before I continue. Ain't that something you don't want to do it? You normally do it after I start driving, but drive because I got the car jacked up. I was there trying to let you all see what it was before I started uh before I started to work on it but obviously I don't want to do right. So, low fluid warning um, is what we're getting. Uh, I done already emptied out all the fluid. So now what I'm finna, about to do is show you uh, how I can possibly fix it. Hopefully it works. Um, but you got to move the inner tie well. So it's a couple of clips. You got to move in a couple of screws. So you got to remove uh, star big screws, two of them, one, two. And then the clips, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So let me make sure that's it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so it's seven clips. So it's, hold on, let me recount them for you. Seven clips, I messed up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, it's eight. Seven and eight. Where are that? Come on, get on my finger. Eight, so it's eight clips. You gotta remove, you gotta remove these three. 10 millimeter bolts, one, two, three. And then um, these two screws, star bit screws, one, two. Does look like, might be some more um, that I'm missing. Indeed I am. 
and then you got three more 10 millimeters. So got to remove all of that. And then it should come out. So let me remove these last three. Got the screws out and then basically you just pull it out and let me set you down while I get it pulled out. There's one more clip I missed. You gotta pull that one too. And it's right up under the step rail. Now these clips, Dirt falling in my eyes, my bad. Now these clips are pretty fragile. So I broke like two of them, but I'm pretty sure I can order them. All right, I'm gonna set you down while I get that out. So we got the fender well out and this is what we're trying to get to right here uh, so this is the sensor right here and uh, it's throwing the code that is low so um, on different vehicles that I've seen it's just uh, because it's clogged up. So I'm gonna try to get that out of there and then I'll cut you back on um, once I get it out. All right, YouTube. So I got the sensor out, um, had to fight with it. So that's the main reason why it's beat up. Uh, but you gotta pry it out of that hole right there. And this is the grommet that it has to pop out of it. Luckily, when you buy this new, it comes with the grommet because I poked it, poked it with the screwdriver. So I'm about to head to the auto parts store and get a new one. And then I'll cut you back on when I get it installed. All right, guys. So we are back. Got the new sensor. Um, and it came with a new grommet. And this is the sensor. So how you get it back in is you stick the grommet in first. You just gotta walk back. Get the grommet in first, and then you just take your sensor and just line it up and just push it in. Now, you are going to have to work it 
into the grooves to get it in there. Um, but that's how you get it in. So I'm going to um, set you down, push it, push it in, and then... So, I got it pushed in. Now, what I'm doing is I don't have it all the way pushed in because of that. This lip right here has to cover up this plastic piece. So, I'm taking the flathead and just popping that lip out as I work my way around. So, I'm going to take the flathead. I'm trying to get it to where you can see. Take the flathead and then just pop it out. And then just do it until you can. It's hard for me to do it because I don't got good leverage. So I got that partially down. So what I'm gonna do is uh wrap everything up and I'm gonna cut you back on once I get it put back in. All right, so got the sensor in. You see that the uh, grommet is overlapping the sensor. So I got that in. Next, what we're gonna do is hook everything back up. Um, and then get everything buttoned back up and we will be done. So this red one, right here red burgundy whatever you want to call it plugs into the sensor the gray one plugs into the motor and um you gotta slide it back in pop the screws in and then i'll be done so let me get to it all right so i got everything slid back into place and everything connected back up so what I gotta do now is screw everything back in and then I'm gonna test it real quick just to be on the safe side. Um, I did get this part from AutoZone. to AutoZone website. This part is not the correct one. But it fits and it fits the uh, plug. So I'll let you know once I get it turned back on. Um, I'm going to finish buttoning everything up and I'll let you know. All right, YouTube, I'm back checking in. Uh, got the sensor and the reservoir reinstalled. I've been sitting in the truck for about maybe five to 10 minutes and the light has not came back on. Um, I did fill it up with washer fluid. So, um, it is full. Well, I probably put like another half a gallon in there. Then it'll be full. Um, everything is working. So, um, everything is put back together correctly. So, the light is gone. Now, I am going to show you the part that I did purchase where's the box So this is the replacement part I got. Um, came from AutoZone. 
So this is the AutoZone part. Now, when you go get this part, if you have a 2010, I want to say, through 2013, AutoZone is going to tell you that this part is not for your vehicle. What I did was I took my old sensor. This is the old sensor. And I matched it up. I matched it up to this sensor right here. And it was the exact same sensor. Uh, exact same sensor. So AutoZone is going to tell you that this sensor is not for a 2010 through 2013, if I'm not mistaken. 2013. But it is. It's the exact sensor that you need. It plugs and the system recognize it. So, um, I did go ahead and get that taken care of. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. Make sure y'all like, share, subscribe, comment. Peace.